It's October and you may be watching the series Stranger Things on Netflix. My son made that sweet intro to match the TV series exactly. Nice job, Cam. He made that without me asking, so I had to come up with a link between money and Stranger Things. I started to think about the Upside Down, which is that creepy underworld that mimics our world, but in a different kind of dimension, really dark. Uh, and then that little psychic girl, Eleven, that opens the gate to this upside down world. And so I started thinking about the gate that opened the world of money for me. And that was reading Peter Schiff's book, The Real Crash. I soaked up all I could from his books and his podcasts, as well as others like Jim Rickards and Thomas Sowell. It's scary how fragile the money system is and was. And I learned how you need to protect yourself from this someday collapse with 10% of your investable assets in gold and silver. But when that strategy becomes a reality, it is going to be absolutely devastating. So while I also recommend this strategy, I am not wishing for it at all. It's going to be completely tragic. The other gate that opened for me was when I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I was getting frustrated on how corrupt the money system was, and all I could figure out was how to protect that tiny little bit of wealth that I had. It wasn't actually going to help me get ahead at all right now. So while gold is insurance, it just wasn't getting, I wasn't getting ahead. But Rich Dad completely changed how I think about money. He showed me how to do what the rich people do and how to utilize the loopholes that the government puts in the tax code for themselves and for their rich friends to gain financial freedom. This is where we get to the upside down. Picture an acrobat standing on a tightrope. Now the tightrope is our dimension, and our dimension has rules. You can move forwards or backwards. But what if right next to our acrobat, there is a flea? Now the flea can also travel back and forth, just like the acrobat, right? Right. Yeah. Here's where things get really interesting. The flea can also travel this way, along the side of the rope. He can even go underneath the rope. Upside down. Exactly. But we're not the flea, we're the acrobat. In this metaphor, yes, we're the acrobat. So we can't go upside down? No. Well, is there any way for the acrobat to get to the upside down? Well, you'd have to create a massive amount of energy, more than humans are currently capable of creating, mind you, to open up some kind of tear in time and space. And then, create a doorway. Like a gate? Sure, like a gate. But again, this is all... Theoretical. But but what if this gate already existed? Well, if it did, I, I think we'd know. It would disrupt gravity, the magnetic field, our environment. Heck, it might even swallow us up whole. Science is neat, but I'm afraid it's not very forgiving. Let's take a look at assets versus liabilities. So going from the upside down, we go here. And so on this column, you have your assets, and on this column, you have your liabilities. The world we live in can be the asset side of the column, and the underworld is the liability side. Liabilities take money out of your pocket, and assets put money in your pocket. Most people have a lot of liabilities and not many assets. The home that you live in is not an asset. Even if you've paid off your mortgage, it still takes money out of your pocket from property taxes and insurance and maintenance. Everyone needs a home to live in, but you can't add it to your asset column. Now, if you buy a home and are able to rent it out for more than your expenses and still have money left over coming in every single month, now that's an asset. And same for your car. That takes money out of your pocket every single month with insurance and maintenance and gas. And maybe you have a loan with it as well. But what if you can use that for a business? Maybe you can put it on the app Toro and rent it out for a few days per month, and that'll cover your expenses and then some. Now you can put that in your asset column. In Stranger Things, the Demogorgon comes over to our world, the world we live in, and takes people back into his underworld to feast on the living. His world is spreading like a virus, taking over our world, and many people use bad debt to buy liabilities instead of good debt to buy assets. Bad debt is like the Demogorgon on Stranger Things. 
growing like a virus on the person's living standards and devouring people's assets so it can grow the liability side of the balance sheet. Good debt, like the little girl 11, can be used to buy assets like rental properties, businesses, or even become a bank to loan people money. Don't get swallowed up by the Demogorgon. Learn how to grow the asset side of your balance sheet by clicking the link below in the description. Try out my free mini course that shows you how to quickly build the asset side of your balance sheet using good debt. Again, click the link below in the description to get access to my free mini course to utilize Eleven's powers and eliminate the Demogorgon in your balance sheet. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this video, and please click the subscribe button so that you get regular uh, updates when this new videos come out. And also, please go to my website where you'll be prompted to join my email mailing list where you'll always get regular updates on new ideas on how I can put you in the director's chair of your finances.